Hello everyone. Let us see the first question in shift to 26th August, JE mains. So in this question, you are given three substances of equal masses and uh, their temperatures are also given. So the three substances are A, B, C. They have masses M each. Let their specific heat capacities be S1, S2, S3. Their initial temperatures are 10, 20, and 30. And when two of them are mixed, temperatures are given. The three combinations they have considered are AB and BC and AC. For AB and BC, they have given us the final temperature. They are asking the final temperature when A and C are mixed. And whenever there is no phase change, the final temperature is simply M1, S1, T1 plus M2, S2, T2 and so on divided by M1, S1 plus M2, S2 plus so on. This is the formula we are using in this particular question. So as per the given data for A and B, when they are mixed, the final temperature is 16. So 16 is equal to M times S1 into 10 plus S2 into 20 divided by M times S1 plus S2. And 26 is equal to M times S2 into 20 plus S3 into 30 because it is B and C which are mixed divided by M times S, S2 plus S3. And finally, what we need, the temperature when A and C are mixed, that can be written as M times S1 into 10 plus, sorry, plus S3 into 30, whole divided by M times S1 plus S3. So what we need, okay, and what is given, all of it is written. And now we have to find out the final temperature when A and C are mixed. The easiest way of doing this is to find out the ratio of S1 and S3. From the given two equations or the information given, we can find out the ratio of S1 and S2, S2 and S3. So using that, we can find out ratio of S1 and S3. So from the first equation and the second equation, let us find out ratios. First equation tells us that 16S1 plus 16S2 is equal to 10 S1 plus 20 S2. So 6 S1 is equal to 4 S2. So S1 by S2 is 2 by 3. And the second equation gives us 6 S2 is equal to 4 S3. I am directly writing it. You can check it, you will get the same thing. So S2 upon S3 is also 2 by 3. So S1 upon S3 is S1 upon S2 into S2 upon S3, which is 4 by 9. So the ratio of S1 by S3 is 4 by 9. So here we can use it. P is equal to after cancelling M, we have S1 by 
S3 into 10 plus 30 divided by S1 by S3 plus 1, which is 40 by 9 plus 30 divided by 1 plus 4 by 9, which is 13 by 9, which is 2 70 plus 40, that is 310 divided by 13. So this is less than 3, more than 2. So this is 13, 20 is 260, and we still have 50. So 13, 3 is 39. So 23 point something. So we can clearly understand that it should be 23.8. So that is about this first question. I hope you have understood. So the next question is, in a capacitor, half the area is filled by two dielectrics, which are having half the thickness of the capacitor plates. So, according to the given question, this is D by 2, this is D by 2. So, the capacitor below has a capacitance of epsilon naught A by 2 divided by B. This capacitor with K1 has a capacitance of epsilon naught A by 2 upon d by 2 because it has only d by 2 thickness and it has a dielectric constant so k1 and the other capacitor has capacitance of k2 epsilon naught a by 2 upon d by 2 the upper two capacitors are in series so their equivalent capacitance is c1 c2 upon c1 plus c2 so they are, as you can see, K1 epsilon naught A by D, K2 epsilon naught A by D. So if I take out epsilon naught A by D from here, I will be left with K1, K2 upon K1 plus K2. And uh, this one is half times epsilon naught A by D, sorry. And therefore, the upper combination and the lower capacitance, these two are in parallel combination. And uh, the effective capacitance comes out to be epsilon naught A by D times K1, K2 by K1 plus K2 plus half. So the correct option is option A. I hope you are clear with this. In this question, we have a conical pendulum. So, the pendulum length is given as L. So, let O be the point of suspension and this is the mass. And the circular path in which uh, this mass is rotating it has a radius of r by sorry l by root 2 so it's like this and it is given that this radius is l by root 2 while this is l so the angle made with the vertical this will be easily understood to be 45 degrees I hope you are clear so far. I am sorry, this is L by root 2. Now, consider the equation of motion for the bob. So, on this bob, we have T, if you take this as theta, T cos theta and T sin theta as the components of tension. 
and apart from that gravity is acting on it so p cos theta minus mg equal to 0 because the bob has no acceleration in the vertical direction and uh, if its velocity is b then towards the center the force is t sin theta that will provide necessary centripetal acceleration of v square upon radius which is l by root 2 so again writing that t cos theta as mg we get tan theta is equal to v square divided by gl upon root 2 since uh, theta is uh, 45 degrees v comes out to be square root of gl upon square root of 2 so the correct option is option d hope you are clear with this since it is being told to us that the image will be formed on the object itself when the mirror is present as as seen in the diagram the rays might be going normal and that is why they are retracing their path and that is why the final image is falling on the object itself which means uh, this i1 here is nothing but center of curvature of the mirror and uh, therefore this distance is two times the focal length which is 30 already the pole of the lens and pole of the mirror are at a distance of 8 centimeters from each other if mirror is removed then directly the image will fall on c and there won't be any retracing of the path of the rays and therefore the final image will be at c only which is at a distance of 38 centimeters from the pole of the lens and therefore the image is at a distance of 38 centimeter and object is at a distance of 20 centimeters so in total the object and image are at a distance of 58 centimeters from each other i hope you understand this so to find out what kind of gate it is let us use boolean algebra so d and e are passing through a nor gate so the final answer which we may call as x so x is equal to d plus e whole bar because d and e are passing through a nor gate to give rise to x and uh, d plus e whole bar can also be written as d bar times e bar as you know now what is d bar so a and b are passing through a nor gate which is nothing but a plus b whole bar and a plus b whole bar is going in two of the nor gates so we can understand that d is equal to a plus a plus b bar whole bar because a and a plus b whole bar are passing through a nor gate to give rise to b similarly e is b plus a plus b whole bar the whole bar so according to the above logic we can say this d is equal to a bar times a plus b bar whole bar that is a bar times a plus b and similarly e is b bar times a plus b so now let us write d in a simplified manner d is a bar a plus a bar b a bar a is always zero and therefore d is simply a bar b 
and E is B bar A plus B bar B. Again, B bar B is also always zero. So this is B bar A. So from here, D bar comes out to be A bar B whole bar, which is equal to A bar bar that is A plus B bar. And D bar comes, so, sorry, E bar comes out to be B bar A whole bar, which is B bar bar that is B plus A bar. So we need X, which is D bar dot E bar or D bar times E bar. So X is equal to A plus B bar. times B plus, sorry, B plus A bar. So this is AB and A bar is zero. B bar B is also zero. So you have AB times B bar A bar or AB times AB plus A bar B bar. Okay. So if you write uh, the truth table, if you draw the truth table here, X, sorry, A, B, and X, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, sorry, 1, 1. So when both are zeros, the X will be 1 because A bar, B bar will be 1. And uh, when one of them is zero, the other is one, the X will come out to be zero. We can check that. And when both are one also, it will yield one. So this is nothing but exclusive NOR gate. So the answer is option D. I hope you have understood this. And uh, we will upload more questions very soon. Thank you for watching this video.